one. Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooke, that gratitude guy with another guest on my gratitude podcast interview, The Pandemic. And today my guest is Dave Spicer. And I was thinking as I called Dave or connected with Dave that met him, gosh, I don't know, a dozen or so years ago. And he and I have a lot of things in common and developed a nice uh, connection and friendship. So Dave, welcome to the podcast. Great to be on with you, David. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let me start off. I've just got several questions for you to try to give people perspectives on what they're going through this. But in uh, Dave Spicer's mind, what, what's the best coping mechanism that you're using to deal with this pandemic? Great question. You know, a couple of things. One is exercise is key for me. Mm. It's not just getting the exercise and getting my heart rate up and, and pushing myself, but just being outdoors. And I wow. love to run or walk in parks. Uh, not just on the street, but actually in a park is very rejuvenating for me. I feel like I'm part of nature. It gives me a chance to con contemplate. Um, so that's been important to be in exercise, but in nature as well. Exactly. And th that's Most a good important. coping skill. That's a good coping skill for me. It is. Um, is it strange to, just on the exercise piece for a second, Dave, is it strange to not see many other people around? Because I've done the same thing and it's, it's weird. You're like in a zombie movie or something. It's kind of odd. It is. Uh, there are some people, but yeah, the numbers are way down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I just feel a lot of gratitude for that because it just allows more solitude, more quiet, yeah. more, more interaction with nature. It allows my mind to drift. Um, so, yeah, I, I love that. When I bike ride, uh, I'll bike ride on the Burke Gilman Trail. Mm -hmm. the numbers are way down there, too. Yeah. There's almost as many walkers as bikers, which is very unusual. Wow. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so for me, the best coping mechanism is, is certainly working out. And then I also really enjoy reading, a lot of, mm. uh, reading different books. I don't seem to know how to read one book through to completion. I seem to have to read <laughs> two or three other books at That's the same good. time. But uh, I'm enjoying, good. I enjoy that. Um, I'm pretty involved with my Rotary Club. And so I've been very engaged with a lot of our different members. Uh, we have a number of Rotarians who are older. By older, I mean into their 80s and low 90s. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's been really wonderful for me in terms of coping with this, is trying to reach out to others to see what their needs are. So I don't be concerned about my own, but I want to be concerned about other people. So that's been a great coping mechanism, just offering service, going to get groceries, having a chat. Some of these folks are very lonely. So that's, that's all special. That's, that's excellent. Cause I think about that exercise. They say that's sort of the fountain of youth. And you mentioned that uh, initially. And then the reading thing, I would hope that a lot of people get caught up on their reading. I'm always thinking I need to read this book. Well, we've got a time when we're kind of housebound, if you will. And, and then to your last point about if you want to help yourself, help other people, it's so rewarding. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm so thrilled. I get to do this gratitude thing all the time and, and just show people a way to, to cope. So um, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Thank you. So, so we're certainly kind of an uncertain time. So uh, whether it's uncertain times or just in general, what would you say you're most grateful for? Well, you know, it's, um, you know, I've been thinking about this morning, yesterday, just thinking about what, what we're all going through. It's first for all of us, to have an experience that's, you know, throughout the world. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're in China or in Spain or Kenya or Ethiopia or Argentina, we are all experiencing to a greater or lesser degree this challenge yes. living and working through the pandemic of coronavirus. Yeah. And so there's this sense of unity I've been thinking about that we all are experiencing. Oh, I like that. Um, fear about it, you know, legitimately mm -hmm. some fear about it. Uh, we may know somebody or we probably know somebody who knows somebody who's experiencing it. And I'm thinking that's around the world. And we're talking about a population of six or seven billion people. So exactly. this is the first time maybe in history. I think so. That we have this kind of a global pandemic that is, um, that is changing our lives, changing every day. And my, my life is different than it was two weeks ago. And I'm just thinking exactly. other people, this is the same thing in different ways. So it kind of is a unifier in a way. It's, it's kind of remarkable in concept to think that great. we are actually unified by this terrible pandemic. So maybe good will come from that. That's, that's a great point. And, and how many things have truly affected the whole globe and it, uh, six, seven billion people. And it makes you think about how maybe they always say it's a small world. Well, this has really made it feel a lot smaller and that's such a positive 
idea is that connection that we're all going through the same thing. And there's something about when you're connected, going through anything, whether it's a pandemic or anything of a negative nature, uh, they're just, there's something about strength in numbers that really helps you to, and as you say, unify, I really like that word. So that's- well, I, have a friend, I have a friend in Denmark, we talked this morning. He was actually mm -hmm. my exchange brother in high school. Oh, we wow. We periodically connect. And he's a scientist. Uh, he was just sharing what's going on in Europe from because he's having conversations with other scientists throughout Europe, people from Spain or Sweden or uh, I don't know if he knows anybody in Italy, but just sharing kind of the science behind this and getting his impression from a scientific standpoint and where he sees us globally and where he sees us uh, potentially next fall. And and yet there's this, um, you know, you can be, what's the right way to put this? You can be paralyzed by the fear of where mm -hmm. this is going, how long this might go on for. Mm -hmm. But there's also um, a sense of um, shared experience, going through this together and really being one for others. And, and what he has to say, we were connecting and he asked me some ideas and I, I shared with him. So there was, there was a sense of bond that we're in this together, right. that we're not alone, that there are important people in science who are really working in medical and other ways to come up with a solution. Exactly. My responsibility is just do what I can that's within my control. Right. And he's doing the same thing within his control, but he's doing it in Denmark. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, that's cool. yeah. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I was thinking another question is you mentioned the exercise and reading uh, and helping others and stuff. Any other tips, thoughts, uh, ideas of things that people can maybe be doing while they're housebound that have occurred to you? You know, I think in terms of trying to do a few things each day, but they're around relationship, reaching out by phone to talk to somebody, um, trying to trying to find ways to make your day have impact. Right. And for me, it's exercise, it's reading, it's reaching out. But um, my wife and I, a couple of days ago, we invited another couple on Zoom to have a cocktail. Oh, nice. Hour. And that's nice. becoming more popular. And it was actually very nice, very fun. And we're going to invite, we're each going to invite two more couples now. Oh, that's very cool. But it was just kind of fun. We laughed. Uh, yeah, we talked about COVID-19, but we talked about a lot of other things too that were much more uplifting and fun. Right. Um, so is, is that a coping mechanism? To me, it's just trying to be creative about our relationship. We can't like go over to their home now, but that doesn't mean we can't communicate and connect with them. I like that. And the connection in a way, the connection is actually, in a, in a, it's a richer way because we realize how fragile and special it is. Um, yes. And when you don't have something that you love, you just kind of miss it and you realize how important it means to you when, you, when you're without it. That's so true. when you have that social connection, uh, it's true. even more special in some ways. Um, so I kid with uh, my friends, I took my wife to uh, Paris over the weekend. And uh, oh. <laughs> by, by that, I mean, I, I went to see a, a virtual museum uh, tour of oh, cool. Newham. Newham. And we had a great time. It was very interesting, very fun. And it was just something, you know, the, the, the price point was really very affordable, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a very good tour. And oh, again, it was cool. a creative thing, creative thing to do. It's just another way to be engaged in a relationship, you know, by uh, using the technology we have available. That's so cool. And I think the whole key about being creative, like going to Paris or the, the cocktail hour with the, the, ex, the two or three couples or what have you, it's just so, it's really making us appreciate things that maybe we didn't appreciate before because you don't really sometimes appreciate something until it's taken away. Yes, and, right. and even something like Zoom, which uh, I'm a big fan of and a lot of us are, of course, but it's just seeing that person is, is not quite the same as face to face, but boy, it's pretty, it's, it's a, a close second in some ways. Yeah. And you think about nothing like sitting down at Starbucks and having a coffee or whatever, but, but creativity, that's a great point. There's a big silver lining that's come out of this is people are getting pretty creative and uh, you just had a couple of good examples. So that's cool. So um, last question is in the Dave Spicer world, any sort of quote or philosophy that you sort of, if you have a sort of the overarching thing that you use for Dave's life in terms of how you approach things or anything you can think of that's kind of been a, a mantra or something that you live by? You know, I have something that I share with Rory. Give me, I, it's down in a file. I'm just going to duck down and sure. see if I can't get out. Give me one second here. You bet.
Sorry, David, I can't find it. Oh, no worries. It was, it was a quote. It's somewhere in my, my office is a little bit messy. Um, no worries. But uh, I could, if you want me to, I could, we could put a or hold I, in this. I could, I could get it by going back in line. But anyway. I oh, can't that's find okay. It right but just can you, anything you can just sort of paraphrase? Sure. Or just sure. Sort of what it, what it uh, the philosophy is, if you will? Uh, let me try to paraphrase it. Um, if you think that it is hard to have to be confined to your home, think more about the person who has no home. Mm. If you feel like your nest egg and your stock investments are really taking a hit, think about that person who only has been able to save a thousand dollars for emergencies. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you have had accomplished nothing during the day except read a book, think about the person who doesn't know how to read. Oh, wow. If you feel like it's really boring and all you're doing is watching TV and you're not getting anything accomplished with a job. Think about the person who doesn't have a job who's been looking for months. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is just sometimes we feel a little bit sorry for ourselves for a good reason. This is a really weird normal. But there are other people who are way down right. the ladder right. who have huge challenges that we can't even imagine. Right. So it's just about perspective during this time frame, I think. Great work. Be grateful for what we do have and not for what we don't have. Be yeah. thankful for the relationships we've got with a spouse or a significant other or our children or grandchildren or friends. And there are other people who um, have very few friends and maybe have no support system. So it's just important to be that's reflecting good. on the good things in our lives. That's, that's, that, yes. that is kind of the paraphrasing. That's, that's not only paraphrased, but that was well worth the wait. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah. Those, were, those were all good things. I go, Where, where's Dave? I know he's coming back soon. But no, yeah. that was very well said. Gosh, I just, I don't know if I could have said it better myself. That's really good. So interesting. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for Absolutely. being on, on the podcast. I had, you had some great points, which I really appreciate. I will uh, uh, put this out on my YouTube channel and uh, you and I will be chatting on Friday. And thank I just want to, and I want to say something to you, Dave. Yes. You know, we've known each other probably a little over a decade. Gosh, that long ago. And I think in that last 10 years, I think about the people you have talked to one-on-one -on -one or in groups as high as four or 500 people and everywhere in between, that every time you share your philosophy of, of gratitude, you are impacting one person for sure, but maybe hundreds. Yeah, and you don't you. know where they're going with that energy, but they are a changed person in a different way. And, and so what a special gift you have to get people to think about gratitude and how they share that gratitude with others mm. uh, by just saying, I love you or thank you for what you've done. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, special, it's a special offering you give to all of us. So I'm grateful to you. know you for the last 10 years. And I know a lot of people have had their life transformed in different ways and in small ways and big ways it's it's great so you you've done a lot of great things in the last 10 years very thank special you. thank you david thank you very much very special I, I just share that with you thank you that means a lot to me and and just so you know that uh not only that just make my day but that'll be in my gratitude journal tomorrow as my highlight of the day so because that's always an important entry is the highlight so thank you for that thank you that means an awful we, lot we to need me. to affirm each we, we need to keep affirming each other, especially yeah, during these hard times. That's very true. That's very true, too. So, wonderful. Well, thank you, David. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for letting me be part of it. I appreciate it very much. You bet.